Well, welcome back. For those of you who follow or who have been following my videos, you know that I'm in the midst of repairing an RCA uh, 1952 RCA uh, black and white TV. But I'm waiting on some capacitors to come in, so that gives me an opportunity to get back to the old Atwater Kent Model 37. And uh, the last time we worked on this thing, I said that the next thing we would do is try to find these 2.5 microfarad capacitors and replace those. Well, I went to the schematic and I tore everything apart. As you can see, everything's kind of all ripped up. And I went to the schematic and I determined that there is a detector grid condenser right here. And it's attached to the, uh, the variable condenser. Well, that capacitor would be that one right there. And that's a mica capacitor. We will not change that one. The next capacitor I found was called a phone condenser. It's a .002, and it raised at 50 or 500 volts. By the way, this uh, mica capacitor is .00025, 500 volts. This phone condenser is .002, 500 volts also. Now that one feeds in the phone condenser, uh, comes down and feeds into the uh, uh, the first uh, audio transformer, and that one would be this capacitor right there. There's the capacitor, the hole for the audio transformer and the wire comes out and goes in that hole. That also is a mica capacitor. We will not mess with that one. The last item is the uh, it's what's called the speaker filter condenser. Speaker filter condenser. And that speaker filter condenser is over here. It's the little gray box you see right there, right, right, that baby right there. One condenser in there, it's a 0.3 microfarad. So I'm gonna have to cut the two black wires coming out of there and mount a, a uh, point, another 0.3 microfarad capacitor on there that take, to take its place. Uh, one of the capacitors that looks like this right here. So we'll get, I think I have one more left. So that leaves us for the question where the heck are these two 0.5 microfarad capacitors? Well, you see here that there's a white wire that connects to one side of one of them and a red wire that connects to the other, and it comes out of one of these uh, phenolic boards. So that means we have to start looking here. And here's the red wire. At one time, that was a red wire. It's kind of bleached out now, but you can still see hints of red down in there. And here's the white wire. And guess where those two wires go? Back down into the tar. I don't believe this, you know. That's where they're at. They're back down into the tar. All right, so what do we do? I don't know. I've got to think about this for a while. All right, I've done a little bit more cogitating on this thing. Now, George down Texas, my buddy there, you look up that word cogitate now, you hear? Okay, I've discovered that the wire right here goes down into the tar connects to one end of this 0.5 microfarad capacitor right here right there and then it comes out of the tar and comes up and connects to this pin right here that would be this wire right here so it goes down this wire right here from here comes back out this wire right here and then solders on to that pin right there. Well, that makes life really easy because all I have to do now is cut this wire here which eliminates the capacitor from the circuit and then connect the 0.5 cap from this wire to this pin. Piece of cake! It doesn't get any better than that. Now the next capacitor is this red one right here and it goes from this pin down into the tar and down into the ground. So all I really have to do is connect a 0.5 microfarad capacitor from this pin which will be I think it's this one right here. It might be this one I'm not sure. But I will solder to whichever pin it is to ground and that solves both of my 0.5 uh, microfarad capacitors. Both of them will remain down in the tar and I'll just bend these wires down in there and when I put this phenolic set of uh, 
boards down. They'll just be tucked down nice and neat under there for anybody that might want them in the future. Nothing to it. I hope you all understand that. From here to here. And from the red one, or actually not the red one, from uh, this one or this one over here. I haven't quite figured out which one it is yet. I think it might be this one. But it'll go to ground. Just like it shows right here. Comes out, comes across, and hooks to ground. It's now time to put everything back together to include this coil. Get this coil soldered back on. And once that's on, and uh, I, I'm not going to I'm not going to solder all these wires up to these various terminals. I went to Radio Shack the other day and bought a whole bunch of uh, uh, extra gator wires. I was kind of low on them anyway. And I'm going to gator wire all these things together. So when I get done, you're going to see gator wires all over the place. But it's going to be on my workbench, not here. And then I'm going to fire it up and see what happens. So the next, uh, the next video you see, this one's going to be cut a little bit short. I'm also going to make sure that every tube is in the right hole. <laughs> I'm not familiar with these kinds of tubes. So I have to make absolutely certain that someone didn't put the wrong tube in the wrong hole. I don't need more headaches, more problems. But I'm going to go ahead and change that... Uh, that uh, filter capacitor going out to that speaker uh, I will change that and I'll add these 2.5 microfarad capacitors get everything put back together set this in uh, make sure everything's righteous and then we'll bring it up on my workbench to see if we can't get some sound